Welcome to the Celebrating Women podcast, co-hosted by Mandy Montana and Ashley Fisher, a podcast that celebrates women, their issues, their thoughts, their lives, conversations that celebrate their gifts, their talents, their courage. It's the Celebrating Women podcast. Presented by Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler, Texas. Hey, it's Mandy Montana, and you know I love Hand and Stone. It's where I go to relax and take care of the majority of my skincare needs. And today I've got Sarah with me. Sarah, there is an amazing Black Friday special coming very soon, right? Yes, yes. Coming up for the holidays. (laughs) Tell me all about it, girl. All right. So our members, you can purchase three gift cards for $139.90. So that's only $46 per service. So that is our cheapest rate of the entire year. Members can purchase as many gift cards as you want. So you can keep them for yourself. You can gift them away. They make an amazing gift. Yes. Um, Our non-members, so they are limited to only two sets, but you can purchase two gift cards for $119.90. So that's still cheaper than our member rate per month at only $59.95 per service. That is incredible. And if somebody was like, hey, um, sounds like I need to be a member because I want unlimited gift cards, they could take care of that too. Absolutely. Okay, incredible. So I take advantage of this pretty much every year. I'm on some kind of list. Mm -hmm. In November, I get a phone call from you guys to remind me, are you doing that again? We are. So our pre-sales do start November 1st. We'll write your name down and how many sets of those gift cards that you want. And we'll verify the last four digits of the card that you do want to charge that to. We'll give you a reminder text before we do charge, but we charge them right before Thanksgiving. So you can pick them up. Perfect. Okay. So if somebody wants to be on that pre-order list like me, Mm -hmm. what number do they call and what do they need to ask for? So call 903-345-6051 and just call and ask to be on the pre-sale list for the gift cards. Perfect. Give me that number one more time. 903 345-6051. Three four five six zero five one. And if I go to handinstonetyler.com, is it also on the front page? It's not. So our Black Friday gift card promotion is an in-store promotion. Perfect. So you need to call or you need to stop by if you want to take advantage yes. of Black Friday savings. Yes. Awesome. Well, you know I'll be there. Welcome back to the Celebrating Women podcast. I'm Mandy Montana. And I am Ashley Fisher. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yes, happy Halloween. So fun. So fun. Um, So speaking of Halloween and all things scary, Mandy and I have really and truly, we both could get on here and spill our hearts about (laughs) so many things and it would wind up both of us being a puddle on the floor crying. And so we thought, you know what? Let's give ourselves a little levity. Mm-hmm. Let's let's giggle a little bit. And uh, Mandy found this um, meme on Pinterest today that's going to be kind of like the catalyst for our conversation, which is we are talking scary moments today, folks. <laughs> You're about to get a whole lot of Ashley and Mandy that you did not ask for. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's something that you just didn't need you know you needed in your life. Yep. But you know, so we're going to be talking about some of our scariest moments and we're going to be taking you back way, way back <laughs> into our adolescence because I was not always the sparkling figure sitting before you, my friend. <laughs> you weren't? <laughs> no, I was not. Shocker, and, neither was I. Okay, well, <laughs> we need to, maybe with this one, mm-hmm. I okay, we need to just, we're going to be brave and we're going to step out Okay, on uh, Pinterest and social media, Pinterest, on Instagram and Facebook. I want us to find a really, I mean, good clutch photo that encapsulates us in this Nostalgia. era of life. Mm-hmm, okay, I can do that. To go with this and I'll work on finding one. But we're going to be talking scary moments from some, like, the period of our life that's really scary for most people. If we think back, Mm. we can think of, like, cringeworthy moments. Hopefully you can laugh at them, too. But um, this meme that she found says, when you're sad, just remember, you don't look like you did in sixth grade. (laughs) 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 And I I can't lie, that kind of made me giggle because there's some some truth to that. (laughs) Y'all, my sixth grade self was so awkward I, but who isn't an awkward 
there are probably a very few people mm -hmm. that are stunners in sixth grade. I remember some of them mm -hmm. from my sixth grade year, some of the girls. Oh, yeah. That were just, I don't know how they always look so beautiful. I don't know if they had I older know. sisters or if their moms were just really good at hair and makeup uh -huh. and whatever. Maybe, but that was so not me. I yep. was much more focused on being a student mm -hmm. and like the activities that I was involved in, which I guess there weren't a ton in sixth grade. Yeah. We did cycles in sixth grade. Did you do that? What is that? It was like instead of, because we weren't like in band and I mean, we had like PE, yeah. but we didn't have band or like electives yet. Okay. So every six weeks we had like a different um, activity that we did. Like we did shop for six yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I forget what else. Uh, home we, ec? Yes, home ec. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't like enough really to really accomplish anything in any of those classes I built a bench <laughs> did you? shop I did my mom still has it wow that's impressive that's pretty impressive my daughter even sits on it that's kind of cool really that is cool isn't that precious that's way built cooler something than with the napkin holder hands. that I built <laughs> yeah and I sewed my own pair of boxers with a pillow Ooh. that I don't have anymore because lord knows I couldn't fit my right leg into those things anymore oh my gosh <laughs> But yeah, you know, no. middle school, first of all, we have to we have to bring out the elephant in the room that I know everyone is thinking that's just plain not fair and I don't understand it. Oh. Sixth graders when we were sixth graders mm -hmm. then and sixth graders now. Where is their awkward face? Like you see these kids online and I'm like oh. Where is your awkward phase, people? I think maybe it's just the kids online that aren't having an awkward okay. phase. I think the average sixth grader is Still probably, awkward. yes, and it's probably why this is a totally different conversation and topic, but why social media is so hard on mental health mm -hmm. for kids of that age yeah. because they are comparing themselves to these kids who are apparently camera ready mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair because everybody's awkward in sixth grade. You might get a little less awkward in seventh or eighth, but I was awkward all the way until I graduated high school. Me too. Uh, oh, this is going to be so good. Yeah. So do you want to, are you thinking uh, of one moment in particular that you want to start with? Oh gosh. I have I, so many. It's hard for me to honestly, find a place to start. What I'm thinking is that, you know, enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that I'm about to just out myself and I just am at the age now where I just don't care because it was like 20 years ago. But I'm thinking about any local listeners. Mm. Um, I may just like start dropping names too because it'll probably make them giggle. I'm trying to think of the best way to really encapsulate how, like the level of my awkwardness. Mm. That's what I'm trying to, and like... <laughs> Is there a um, movie or a pop culture moment that is reflective of it that you can think of? Oh, that's a good question. I I don't know. I just go back to this one story in my head and like, uh, it's just cringeworthy. And I don't even know if it'll come across that way. It's just one of those things when I think about it, I just shake my head. I'm like, oh, babe. <laughs> so like there was in sixth grade, you know, that's the year where – you are in a much bigger school. You have all mm. of these new kids around you because several elementary schools feed into the middle school. So you're not just with the kids that you went to elementary with. You are with them plus five other kids. Unless you went to a teeny tiny school where I was with the same people until I graduated. So there's that. This was like... <laughs> Which is a whole other <laughs> level of awkward, so I can't <laughs> wait to hear your take. So this was just like culture shock and like all kinds of new mm -hmm. people and new responsibilities and all this stuff. And with it came new boys. Mm. And there were, there was one, I feel like, and I feel like the people that went to Hubbard with me would agree. There was like one standout boy Oh, that was like the boy. There's usually one. And I think part of it was because he was the first one to gel his hair in oh. that like... Yeah. faux hawk kind of no not the faux hawk it was like the slicked down until the very front and then the front flipped up do you remember uh, that i do remember face? that i do <laughs> oh, so anyway dear. i like most other girls in sixth grade i had a crush on him that guy on that guy i'm i'm trying so hard not to say his name because <laughs> i don't know anyway i may you just never know it still embarrasses me to think that somehow i could get it back around to him <laughs> <laughs> But maybe he would hear this and go... He'd probably be flattered. Well, and maybe if he hears the story, he'll go, oh, okay, so yeah, she's not crazy. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, okay. Sixth grade. 
she's wheezing oh, over there I already. Have, I still have a cold, guys. Forgive me. <coughs> I'm just having all these flashback memories to these cringeworthy oh, things I did. So I think, I've, I've got a memory now. I know exactly which one to share. All right. So one of, okay. and one of the most endearing things, I think, is anyone who wheezes when they laugh. Mm. So just keep it up. It's good. All right. So, okay. Ashley in sixth grade. I was very self-conscious because we had that we were forced to tuck our shirts in and oh. I was already very self-conscious. I knew that I had hips. Nobody else in my grade had hips. Oh. And so I felt like that was always on like display. So Ashley in sixth grade would walk around with a blue jean jacket just to like cover up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I had this zebra print purse that was just this little like handheld thing. <laughs> And like a um, clutch, like a clutch. Uh And so I would put it on my wrist and then I would get my big three inch three ring binder and Mm -hmm. I'd go to class and I was just hot stuff. Or so I thought this was the thing. I really thought that I looked cute, cute. I'm sure you were. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, whether that guy thought so or not. Oh, yeah. So I was just... Oh, gosh, now it's all coming back to me. Oh, like I would in Mrs. Reed's, hey, Miss Reed, in Mrs. Reed's language arts class, it Ooh. was like all of these boys, because it wasn't just that one boy, it was several other boys that was just like, <gasps> we're all in the room all together, but so were like the most popular girls. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm very aware of like where I fall in those lines, you know mm. what I mean? Because you are as a sixth grader. Mm-hmm. And I would, oh no, I would do things like he would walk by and he sat in the row next to me, like a couple behind me. Mm-hmm. And I would put my elbow on the desk and I would knock my pencil off. Oh, you did the clueless move. I did the clueless move because that's where I got it I'm from. I'm sure it is. And I would wait on him to pick it up. Ashley, that's so adorable. Isn't that precious? No, it it's is. not. So then Aww. here's the other thing, this purse, this zebra purse that I carried around. Oh dear. My good friends, Jalen and Carly, are already finishing this sentence for me and laughing to themselves because I didn't carry, like, you know, tampons or makeup or whatever in my purse because I just wasn't there yet. I carried around markers and highlighters and stamps. (laughs) Well, yeah. I mean. You're in sixth grade. That makes complete sense. mm -hmm. And so there was one day. You're a creative child. Yeah, I guess that's part of it. Okay, we'll give we'll give little Ashley some grace there. Yes, and other children who carry markers and highlighters. It's totally fine. It's It's totally fine. Yes, I'm just laughing at myself because of what I did next. So in order to one day our schedules got messed up for some reason, and for whatever reason, me and that boy had to stay in our English classroom an extra period. Mm -hmm. So it kind of became this like free period. And so I thought, and he was sitting right next to me. Oh, I was like, this is my chance like to really impress him. And I'm guessing he didn't have a girlfriend. He might have because he and like. I mean, not that it really matters in sixth grade, but it kind of does. Yeah. I'm trying to think if at the time they may have been a thing. It was like him and then the most popular girl. Yeah. Of course, this was all before talking was talking. Yes. So anyway, he's sitting next to me and I had had to have a booster shot the day before. And I remember like thinking, maybe he'll feel sorry for me. So I kept like grabbing my arm going, ow. And that's really annoying. Um thinking I just wanted to grab his attention somehow Mm -hmm. and that's how I chose Mm -hmm. to do that and then I thought well that's not going anywhere so I thought "Hmm, what else can I do (laughs) and so (laughs) it's it's just getting it's and people are gonna be like okay it's just weird there's nothing even like cute about this it's just weird but uh you know we're sitting there and one thing like I should have just stayed on this vein because there were photo albums in the back of like our teachers doing crazy things so we were like looking through those like oh my gosh like they're so funny I should have just stayed y'all were having this conversation we're having that conversation I should have just yeah you're right there I should have stayed there so but I didn't I didn't because then we were done with the photo albums and we still got like another 45 minutes and I'm going (laughs) what am I gonna do (laughs) and so I thought aha I have a stamp and some markers in my bag okay so I get out my notebook paper and the stamp says best friends well I don't have any ink so I get my marker out and I color the stamp and I'm looking at him at the same time (laughs) 
<laughs> You're making eyes at him as you color your stamp. Oh, God. It's so horrible. <laughs> and I color the whole thing. I look at him and then I stamp the paper. And I mean, I don't just stamp my paper. I stamp the paper <laughs> to try with some sass to try and get his to just catch his eye. It didn't. And then I thought, I just kind of like, <laughs> I just, I just sat there and like looked at my notebook paper with my stamp and clutched my hurt little booster shot arm and thought, I don't know what I thought. I just thought, well, I don't understand why that didn't work. <laughs> and I mean, bless his soul. Thank God. He truly was one of these people. Sometimes when these boys, when they know they're hot stuff or they mm-hmm. know a lot of people think they that they're hot be stuff. not very nice. They can be not very nice. He was always very, very kind. Always. Yeah. Throughout the years. Throughout middle school, high school. Even if I ran into him in college, he mm-hmm. just, he was just very kind. So he did not roll his eyes at me or like just. Actually, I think he was probably just confused. <laughs> Like, what is she doing over there? Like, best friends. Like, what does that mean? I and yeah. If he even looked at it, I mean, I don't mm, know. I don't even know. I, I just think about her and I'm like. Her? I'm sixth grade mm, Ashley. Sixth mm-hmm. grade Ashley. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> what would you tell her now? What would you tell sixth grade Ashley to do? Just relax, babe. Just relax. Like, you. Anytime, like if you feel like you have to try or you feel like you have to cook something up, just stop. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just, yeah. it's okay. It's okay. Just be still. <laughs> don't, you don't, you don't have to. So how did that period end? Did y'all go your separate ways and you just yeah. felt like maybe next time? Yeah. And then I was, you know, just off to the, to the races, I guess, after that. But it was just very like, I just, the picture that brings like the cringe for me is mm-hmm. that. It was the pizzazz and the sass that I used on that stamp. For context, what were you into, like, pop culture at that age? Like, music, movies, like, what? Oh, Do you remember what you were into? I Hanson? mean, Hanson, uh, it was still Britney and yeah. NSYNC and mm-hmm. Backstreet Boys and mm-hmm. Celine Dion, all of her, like, hits. And I was a very, like, romantic person even then Mm -hmm. so in my head this was all very like layered and in-depth because in my head the story writer in me goes oh you're writing a rom-com this is your meet cute exactly exactly and then I'm gonna stamp my way to his heart stamp my way to his heart god bless (laughs) but it was just I you know I just (laughs) like or my thought was if I just flick my pencil off my desk it's we're gonna meet eyes and it's just gonna all be Mm. and I didn't know the movies never told you what happened really after that point it's like they lock eyes and then you just get this feeling like oh they're off there they go into the sunset right he just handed me my pencil (laughs) (laughs) and I'm like think of like mean girls Mm -hmm. whenever she's like October 3rd Mm mm-hmm he handed me a pencil yeah. or whatever, whatever oh, yeah. it was. That That's like the moment that, that I'm seeing that in was, my mind. That was me. Like yeah. that, I, sometimes I, I don't know. I feel like if people, if a certain couple of people understood the depth of my adoration for them, it would be like, yeah, put me in a loony bin because I was yeah. such a, Again, I was a romantic. I was an I was old too. soul. Same. Amongst, totally. you know, teenage girls who often were not. Or if they were oh, yeah. an old soul, they certainly weren't like in the popular crowd. Yeah. Or or they were behaving differently, right? Exactly. Like they may be recovering it up with mm-hmm. behavior, learned yes. behaviors from other things. Yeah, or that's not to say that they weren't into... like, they didn't, weren't, weren't people of depth because they were then, they are now. But I just felt very different. I know. I know exactly what you mean. Um, and it's interesting because some of the girls that I felt like I was so different than, then, mm-hmm. that I've gotten to know as adults now, we have so much more in common. Mm-hmm. And I just think they had different pressures on them. Yeah. A lot of times really like challenging home lives that I was mm-hmm. completely unaware of. Right. And their aloofness is what I perceived as aloofness and like snobbiness mm-hmm. was not that. It was... They had walls up because they were protecting their hearts. Yeah. And so they were like shy and quiet and 
kept to themselves, which seemed mysterious and beautiful at the time. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I mean, I guess was and alluring to the boys. Yeah. Um, but really, it was because they had a lot more going on inside yeah. that, than they were willing to share. And so yeah. it's just been really, like when I think back about that time now, I have so much more appreciation <laughs> for people that I didn't. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I didn't mean to go like too deep on that. No, but, it's good. But I, I was completely awkward, Ashley. I did all kinds of random, terrible, like weird stuff and had weird, random things said to me. So like you. I developed early too, but Mm -hmm. instead of having, I mean, I had hips, but I didn't have the hips that you had. I had boobs Mm. early, Mm -hmm. like at 12 and at 13, I was like in a C cup. Oh, dang. Yeah. So boys pop my bra all the time. Golly. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, things that like you couldn't get away with now. No. Yeah. Like people would, boys would come up behind me and like slap my butt. Yeah. And I was so taken aback by it. Yeah. That I didn't know what to do until I did end up punching one guy. Did you? Yeah. Well, I did some. I'm, we're not going to tell that story. <laughs> <clears throat> not going to tell that story. That was really, really horrible of me. And I'm just not going to out myself. So <laughs> I was younger than sixth grade. But like sixth and seventh grade, I was from the collarbone down, mm-hmm. I looked like I was 18. Yeah. From the collarbone up, I looked like I was 11. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I had a round face. Um, I've always had naturally curly, wavy hair, but I didn't know what to do with it then. Oh, yeah, me either. So I, one of the boys called me Bride of Frankenstein once because my hair was just so bushy. And for, like, think yeah. Hermione and Harry Potter. That was me too. Early on. And God bless it if it was a humid day. I know. Oh, it was horrible. I know. And we had athletics mm-hmm. first, period. Not, not like, cool. Not I, cool. I would come in from athletics <laughs> and I turn red really easily. Like I have, which apparently the estheticians tell me is a good thing. My blood comes to the surface of my skin really easily. Mm-hmm. And so I would come in looking like a tomato <laughs> yeah. with Hermione hair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to second period, like hey, everybody. awful because I was mm-hmm. giving it my all in athletics uh-huh. and I was... You know, I was a little bit more athletic then. I was really chunky later in high school, but I was pretty <laughs> athletic in sixth and seventh grade. Um, but I was just awkward. And so the boys, I remember once I was in this like select group, this gifted and talented class is what it was. And it was a combination of seventh and eighth graders. And when I was in seventh grade, I remember once like one of the things that got back to me from one of the upperclassmen was yeah, Mandy will probably be pretty in high school. Oh, uh, good you, grief. You know? You know what? I had someone say that something similar to me in fifth grade because yeah. fifth grade I was hitting puberty. Uh huh. So I got really, really chunky. Like mm-hmm. fourth grade and fifth grade. I, I did too. I got real chunky. I weighed 111 and pounds in fifth grade. I weighed 118 in fourth grade. Yep. So it was, yeah. So I got made fun of. I My little boyfriend at the time wrote me a really horrible note. It was terrible. Oh. You know, but then seventh grade when Talk I was. Talk about scary moments. Yeah. When I was super thin in seventh grade uh-huh. for not great reasons. Right. He was like, I'm so sorry for that note I wrote you in fourth grade. I'm like, I bet you are. Anyway, <clears throat> so in fifth grade, though, a boy said, um, um, we were just talking and we just said like, you know, really just, I mean, just face wise, you have the prettiest face, <laughs> but because I was chunkier. Uh-huh. Yeah. I used to get told I had nice eyes a lot, mm-hmm. which was not a reflection of my eyes. Yeah. It's what the boys felt like they could say about my chest without, I mean, they would, they would look at me and be making this face like you've got really pretty eyes. Oh, that just gives me. I mean, me- <laughs> it was. Um, and then once I had, um, okay, this. This is something that I like, I just can't get over. And I'm going to try to say this in the most PC way that I can. Did you ever encounter pickup time in middle school where the boys were getting ready for football practice, but maybe you were being picked up somewhere nearby and they were just kind of hanging out? Because that was our situation Uh where I went to school. And so I was waiting to be picked up by a friend's mom, Mm -hmm. or at least this is how I remember it. And there were like four or five guys like hanging out along the side of the gym, getting mm-hmm. ready to walk across the street to go to the, f- the football stadium. Mm-hmm. One of them calls out to me, hey, Mandy. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, this is one of the most popular cute boys. He's still, he's adorable. Yeah. He's 
he's still not my favorite person. I Aww. didn't I didn't like him then, but a lot of girls had a crush on him. Like he was kind of yeah. one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, good at football. He was cute. I think he was sort of new to our school. I think he may have moved in in sixth grade. This was, I think, seventh grade. Hey, Mandy, do you have a nice and then a slang word for pubic hair? That oh. I didn't know what it was. <gasps> what did you say? Oh, no. What did you say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so just a heads up <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm, we're going there so I'm just gonna go there <laughs> this is one of the scariest moments the word bush right that's what he yelled hey Mandy do you have a nice bush I didn't know what the hell that was Ashley you said you didn't know I don't know I didn't know what it was and I, honestly I don't know if I did or I didn't <laughs> I mean, how do you know? I mean, <laughs> excuse me, sir. <laughs> Can I ask you what, what constitutes a good bush? I mean, is it that it's trimmed and kept up? Like, what is it? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Oh, man. I'm sorry for making you cry. I hope this oh, is an okay topic of conversation. Listen, I hope we can let's leave real. that in there. I hope it's and real. pray that anybody listening to this, first of all, that you can laugh at us, but that you can think of something that mm-hmm. it makes you laugh because this stuff is just priceless. Did you? Okay. Um, oh. So this is sort of similar. Same kind of topic. Oh. Middle school <laughs> romance. Scary moments. Um. Did you ever make nicknames up for your crushes so you could talk Heck about yes. them with your friends? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> we had all these weird <laughs> nicknames that we thought we were so clever. Like my friend Lindsay had a crush on this guy and we called him 21 mm-hmm. because his birthday was on the 21st day of a mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. And so, so sneaky. we just called him 21. <laughs> the guy I had a crush on, I don't really remember why we called him this, but we called him Spot. Like okay. a dog, like okay. Spot. Okay. I don't know why. <laughs> but we talked about 21 and Spot a lot, and they were a year older than us. <clears throat> okay. And we were at a football game one night, a varsity game when we were in middle school, so the boys our age were not on the field. Um, they were in the stands, and I don't know, I don't even remember exactly what all went down with this, but Spot was sitting in front of me. Mm-hmm. So to get his attention, I didn't mm-hmm. drop a pencil. <laughs> Why? And it obviously worked really I threw well. I ice at him. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. I mean, we're all I mean, just... just chunked it. Like, uh-huh. in, in fact, he kept turning uh-huh. around like... What are you doing? I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. Okay. So this is... Oh, But oh. I totally understood the pencil move because... Because you chunked the because ice. Because I threw ice. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Well, okay, so I think probably, I think maybe my, after my stamp moment was such mm. a fail and he went on to continue dating the, you popular know, girl. popular girl, I mm-hmm. was like, you know what? I think I may need to move on. I was smart. <laughs> it yes. It might take me a minute. Yes. But I was smart. And at some point between sixth grade and seventh grade, I caught the attention of a boy who was super like he was always getting in trouble for talking but he was really funny and every he was that guy that everybody liked Mm -hmm. and um, and you got his attention I got his attention lord god I do not know how Mm -hmm. maybe it was probably in it because what happened was I quit trying or I wasn't thinking about him Mm -hmm. and so just my self came through (laughs) imagine that working imagine that and um and he liked me for about two weeks, mm-hmm. which in middle school world was pretty... That's a long time. That was a long time. That was a long yeah. time. The problem was I... We, I don't even know. We, he was always like going from like girl to girl. Like if he had a girlfriend, he was talking with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, not like in a cheaty way, but just talking with them so that when that relationship ended, then here comes the next one. Mm. Um, Funnily enough, and this will probably out myself a little bit, one of his girlfriends in middle school is now the mom of two kids in one of my kids' classes. Oh, that's funny. And so, you know, years ago, I'm looking at her and I'm like... Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, oh, hey, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's just funny because, like, time has passed. She's married. I'm married. All good. But 
since I figured out like, okay, the thing with the first boy, that obviously is not going to work out. Something with this other boy, like it got its claws in me. And Ooh. I mean, when I tell you to this day, I would tell you that I truly loved him. Aww. Like I, it was, I was I that in love with him. Yeah. For all the right reasons, he was funny, he was kind, he honestly is one of the people I think about that, you know, aided in, like, me kind of going towards, like, my own relationship with the Lord. Like, he, he, his parents and, you know, him came and picked me up in middle school and we went to a little Wednesday night church thing and I can remember sitting next to each other and, like, hands just, like, barely not even touching, but, like, that electricity. You could feel the current. Oh, my gosh, Mm -hmm. Yes. And, but of course, because he was a middle school boy, he moved on. Well, yeah. You know, and I mean, well, anyway, but I just didn't. And when Mm. I say I didn't, I didn't for a very, very, very long time. Very long time. I have one of those. Um, so I spent a lot of time going, well, you liked me. Like, why don't you like me now? And so, Mm -hmm. and so constantly trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And then, um, he wrote in my yearbook, um, like we should get together this summer. And I thought, yes. Like in high school? No, in in middle school. In middle school. Okay. And so like the first weekend, oh God, of, um, summertime, like seventh grade, uh, somehow, um, somehow asked me and my friend Carly to go swim at Tyler Tennis and Swim. Mm-hmm. And I was stoked. I was like, oh my gosh, like, okay, maybe things will come back around. Maybe this is my chance. Well, Carly bowed out. She didn't want to go swimming, which I was so ticked at her about Ooh. that. And then, but then I was like, because I didn't want to go by myself. But then I thought, no, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. That's brave. So I had my mom drive me to tennis and swim. Meanwhile, the whole way there, I'm shaving my legs because it's, You're I have shaving not. Shaving your legs in the car? In the car with lotion in a towel. Like it was oh interesting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And I had on this slick little black tankini <laughs> and a little wrap. I thought I was looking good because by that yeah. point I'd lost kind of the chunky weight. And mm-hmm. I felt pretty confident. good and confident. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And I, you know what's so weird about middle school boys is like if you do, if you get invited to go do something, then when you get together, they often act like they don't know you when you mm, yes when I, you get I, there I, I, yes and i don't understand that to this day i think it's their insecurities coming out but i'm i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm like dude you asked me to come here why yeah. are you going everywhere else except for around me he wanted to be cool ashley i well i guess you can't try too hard so he went up to the diving board so then i went up to the diving board Uh oh so he jump in jump in cool well then somehow oh god and then <laughs> So then somehow or another, he ends up behind me in line at the diving board, and it's my turn to go, and I'm thinking, here's my, again, here's my opportunity, here's my chance, (laughs) and I've thought, you know, I'm pretty good at diving, like, I'm going to dive, and I dove, and I don't know to this day exactly what happened, but I dove, but it ended up more like a belly flop. Oh, Ashley. That... You know, like when you dive and like your swimsuit top comes down oh, or no. other oh, parts no. of things oh, come no. down. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. So all I remember is that I, the dive did not go as it was supposed to. It was more like a belly flop. But then my bottoms came down <gasps> and my <laughs> bare butt no. came up no. out of the water. No. And I just remember going... I mean, as quickly as I could, trying to shift my weight and pull up my bottoms and, like, get my ass out of the air. (laughs) And I I just, like, I just remember getting out of the water, and he, bless him. He was kind to you. He acted like he didn't see anything. To this day, I still don't know if he did. I don't know how he couldn't have. Oh, bless it. And I, I, I just, mm, yeah, that, that one, that one's a good one. But yeah, my bare hiney up in the air after endeavoring to do like a beautiful swan dive that turned belly flop. I mean, talk about like (laughs) when we're, when you're trying too hard, being shown why you don't try so hard. 
You know what I mean? Yes. Like one of those, I mean, I've had plenty Uh of them. I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head right now because I know, no, 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 that Mm -hmm. I've had them where I've just completely mortified myself in those ways. Yes. But it's like, you're just, you just want to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. And you you don't know how to make that happen. No, no. And I was like, I was thinking back to your moment where you were like coloring the stamp and I had this thought earlier of like, one of the ways like that you could be seen and this is like me talking to myself a little bit too it's like just to have drawn something and been creative on your own and have him notice that mm-hmm. right? like it wouldn't have where it wasn't about him but when you're in sixth and seventh grade mm-hmm. you're so worried about what's going on around you and what other people think of you it's like you can't help it you're trying to find your way in the world it's mm-hmm. it's so natural to like try to impress people and try to be impressive and yeah when like you said, just being yourself mm-hmm. is what is the because that's impressive what thing, that's right? what always did it. Like any time I had any boy express interest in me, mm-hmm. it every time it was when I was not trying. Yeah, but I think that what I felt like I saw going on around me were these girls that like. I think maybe you and I have talked about this off mic. I always felt like there was this group of girls that got a memo about how to do the thing and how to do things that I did not get that memo. Same. And so I would look at them and I would look at their confidence or I would look at their intention, their intentionality about going after a a boy and getting him. Mm. And I just would marvel at that because I'm like, if I tried to do that, yeah, I mean, but probably the difference is if I had tried to do that, I would have been trying to copy someone else. They were just being themselves. Yeah. So any time that I was just myself is when I would inevitably find someone showing interest. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I was not interested. (laughs) You know, I was so boy crazy, so boy crazy in middle school and high school. And I never, I mean, I had like, this is kind of a funny story. My seventh grade boyfriend Mm -hmm. sat next to me in life science class. And I don't know if you had a teacher like this, but I feel like at some point we've all had one that was like the hardest teacher in the middle school. And you Mm -hmm. knew if you were in his class, he was going to, he or she, it was going to be challenging. Um, They were strict. He posted like our grades, but didn't put our names by them so that we could see like who was top in the class. Like, yeah, yeah. his name was Mr. Honey. And this is so weird. I don't know why I remember this, but he used to like, he would raise his finger up and down and say respiration releases energy, which is like, ox- I don't know why. That's mm-hmm. like, but he did it all the time. And mm-hmm. so for some reason, like I still, if I move my fingers like that, <laughs> I know that respiration releases energy. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Honey. Thanks, Mr. Honey. I don't know. <laughs> but, and I feel like I can say this. I don't think he would mind if he heard this at all. And I hope his precious, gorgeous wife does not mind. But my friend Marshall mm-hmm. was my first boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And we sat next to each other in life science and I mean, our relationship consisted of sitting by each other in science class and maybe sitting by each other at lunch and telling people that we were each other's boyfriend and yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. Like I we mean, didn't go anywhere. Of it. Yeah. No, yeah, I you think can't. We, we maybe like danced together at a middle school dance. But what's funny is my 20th high school reunion was last summer. Mm. And so Marshall and I both went all the way through high school together. Um, White Oak's a small 2A school. It was 3A back then. But – I mean, there were like 88 of us in our graduating class. Yeah. It was small. Yeah. So we all knew a lot about each other. We saw each other in our awkward phases. Um, but Marshall moved in in sixth grade. His dad was the new athletic director. And so I, that's he was kind of the new kid in middle school too. But he was good at football. And he was funny. He's just easy to be around. And so I guess he was making me laugh in science class. Anyway, he was my boyfriend. So fast forward to 20th high school reunion We've sort of stayed in touch on social media, but we don't really talk much. He finds me and he's like, Mandy, Mandy, we got to take a selfie. And I'm like, okay, we like, do. could you just introduce me to your wife yeah. first? <laughs> like, my husband wasn't with me. Um, and so I was like, what is going on? He was like, my kids don't believe me. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, they don't believe me that my first girlfriend was Mandy Montana. <gasps> That's so fun. Oh, that's awesome. It was so sweet. He was like, I tell them, and they were like, they don't believe you. They're like, we need a photo, Dad. It was really sweet Uh, because apparently he's followed my career. He's been in and around East Texas for the most part of our adult lives. Yeah. He's a football coach. He's a teacher now. He's actually Mm -hmm. going through um, some form of seminary. 
He's a really interesting, really cool guy. We, you know, we got to talk in at um, the 20th year reunion and, you know, I'm interested in philosophy and theology. Mm -hmm. And so he and I started exchanging ideas. Yeah. Anyway, it's been, it's been fun to reconnect with him, but yeah. This whole, like going back to this thing about boys, like inviting you to places. So that same boy from the swimming pool, Mm. I'm telling you that, that was a thing. Left an impression. He did. He really did. And so fast forward to freshman year of high school. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's like three years, yeah. three years. I'm still, still awkward. I was way awkward as a freshman. I was still awkward, but I was less so. I, I hit it better because I got a lot more quiet. Mm. I, you know, um, but still inwardly, I was just, I was the oh, same yeah. awkward kid. But to look at me, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that necessarily because I wasn't walking around with a stamp. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't stamping best friends. I wasn't stamping best friends or knocking pencils off of desktops. Oh my gosh. But uh, it was Christmas break. I still remember the day. It I'm was just thinking about what your teacher was to she wasn't paying any attention to us because we were just back there yeah, like... Yeah, but you know teachers... I know. ...pay more attention than we thought they did. Yeah, that's true. I should ask her. I'm still I'm you, friends with her on Facebook. Yeah. I should ask her. <laughs> um, so, but I remember <laughs> this in particular. I remember the day because I still will think about it when it rolls around sometimes. Mm-hmm. January 4th. I don't remember the year, but I was a freshman in high school. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I was still very much hung up on him, and I was with my mom in J.C. Penney, mm-hmm. and my phone started to ring, and it was him. And I mean, why I even had his number, I don't know, because it was one of those things where, like, you know, we just did not talk, especially after the butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh man! But he calls me, and I my heart just about left my sure, chest. Sure. Sure. So I, I answer it, hello, and he's like, hey, um, a bunch of, like, a few of us are going to go see Peter Pan. Do you want to come with us? And I was like, yeah, I do. Okay, well, we'll see you at Times Square, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, mom, he just called me. I was about to say his name. He just <laughs> called me, and he wants me to go to the movie. And she was like, because oh, she knew. She knew you had the crush. And I And she was like, okay. So we, like, ran home. I got in something that I felt like was cute. I knew we would be with a group. And I get there, and I swear to you, the entire time, it was as if I did not exist. But here's what I realized, and I, I did not realize it until a couple of years later, because it was so strange to me. Like, we started out, I tried to finagle it to where we were at least sitting next to each other mm-hmm. during the movie. He, at one point in the middle of the movie, got up and went and sat by next to somebody else, which I was on the end, so it left me alone and I was like okay that's cool but and then after the movie like I was just standing off to the side because I was like I don't know why I'm here anymore and he was like you know you can like come over here and like talk I'm like no it's okay my mom's almost here I was just so I was you were so embarrassed hearted yes and embarrassed and like I don't even know why I'm here a couple of years later did not dawn on me that the group that was there was like a group that he like went to church with. Oh. And in that group, there was an Ashley. I think he called the wrong Ashley. Oh my goodness. Uh huh. Like I'm pretty sure he, because oh, that's there was, there was no other reason. We had not talked for yeah. a long time. Oh, wow. And I wasn't friends with the rest of those people. Oh, wow. I'm Ashley. like, oh my God, he didn't even mean to call me. But I went and I was like so eager and like, you yeah. know, but yeah, so that was rough. <laughs> it's okay. I'm fine. Scariest moments. <laughs> Scary moments. On the Halloween episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The butt thing is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I had a similar situation. I was a little bit older, which makes it even more awkward. So did you, um, were you in bands? Mm-mm. Okay. So I was in band. And our school, every four years, so you got to go once Mm -hmm. when you were in high school, would go to Walt Disney World and participate in what's called Magic Music Days. Mm -hmm. And bands from all over the country come, marching bands, and they perform in the parades. Which, shout out to White Oak High School. They just got second in state. Nice. Yeah, like this week. Congrats. um, This past week. So, yeah, that was huge. We did not make it that far whenever I was in school. But 
my freshman year, so awkward, still awkward, still so awkward, we went to Magic Music Days. And I actually ended up staying in a room with three other sophomores. And that was a whole other situation in and of itself Mm -hmm. where I was friends with all three girls. But by the end of the trip, one of the girls felt like I was replacing her Mm -hmm. in the group by taking her friends over, I guess, Uh because I was more fun. I don't know. She got real jealous. It was a... A thing. It was a disaster because they're all and they're all lovely adults now. Yeah, and I felt so guilty because I was like, I'm, I can't, why can't we all just be friends? Yeah, you know. Um, but on the way there, it's like a twenty-two hour bus ride, charter buses. I think we had two, maybe three charter buses. <laughs> Before we got to Disney World, we were going to stop at this beach, mm-hmm. and. We mm-hmm. were going to be on the beach. We we're going to be in our swimsuits. We we're going to hang out. And then we were going to go on to Orlando and um, be at the hotel and whatever the things. Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to be clever and I'm going to put my swimsuit on on the bus so that I won't have to change in like an outdoor yeah, yeah. restroom. Mm-hmm. So I went into the restroom on the bus. Oh, no. And changed. Okay. What I did didn't know was uh-huh. the tinted windows <gasps> on the bus oh god oh, at no. night oh no i'm changing like inside a they could see me oh no oh, oh gosh yes oh no i didn't have a terrible figure as a freshman of course you didn't it was probably drop dead gorgeous <sighs> no, that's no, not no, the no. thing no i was pr- i was still chunky but i i was incredibly awkward and I don't remember who told me when they got back on the bus <laughs> but somebody did because everybody else had gotten off the bus we were like at a rest stop or something to go to the other bathrooms right yeah. and some of them were going to change in there uh-huh. so I was like well, I'll just use the one on the bus because nobody's here it'll be private yeah opposite but where opposite. so people saw people saw <gasps> and I don't know if it was a I can't remember if it was a silhouette oh, or if God. it was like they could actually see in the window because of the light inside versus it being dark outside you just made me remember something else but like I mean I, I hope <laughs> I hope telling this story gives somebody else peace to know that they're not alone that they, <laughs> they have these terrible just moments just come talk with them. Ashley and Mandy will make you feel oh, much my better about gosh <laughs> gee whiz well I mean oh, you know and part of it too like like, I truly hope that the boys that I'm raising, mm. I endeavor to raise two boys that if they see a young lady get into an embarrassing situation, that they will cover their tail. And I mean, like, I, either by acting like nothing happened or, like, I saw Figuratively something. Figuratively or literally. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I rem- I've seen, you know, something on Instagram about – you know, one day, um, this young lady, she started her period and it went through and and she was so embarrassed. And this young man came up behind her and tied his jacket around her. And he said, I have sisters at home here. No big deal. Oh, what kindness. I want my boys to show that kind of kindness. Do not. And I'm on them about do not jump on someone's moment of embarrassment and make it worse. Like, if yeah. you have it within you, if you have the power within you to help them in that moment, help them. Because, goodness gracious, yeah. you know. Um, but not all boys. I mean, good grief. I mean, I mean we're all school, human. We're all I'm sure human. that I've laughed at something that I would not laugh at now as an adult. Oh, I, I mean, know I have. Because, you know, with me and facial expressions and, oh, and yeah, sounds same. I I'm undone like it yeah. can be the worst most inappropriate moment and I I, I can't handle it I, I cannot handle it but I can remember being in sixth or seventh grade feeling really cute that day because I was starting to figure out my hair mm. I had a family member explain to me that she and I had very similar hair, and what she did, she when she got out of the shower, she'd put mousse in it, and the whole yeah. term scrunch. Oh, yeah. You scrunch your scrunched hair. scrunched my hair, too. I learned that, and it it was night and day difference. Same. I came back Christmas after Christmas in sixth grade year, and people were like, whoa, because I figured out how to do my hair. Mm-hmm. I got new clothes. I wore mm-hmm. just a little bit of makeup. Mm-hmm. And in seventh grade, that kind of continued. I kept figuring out what to do with my hair and my makeup and my clothes got a little bit better. That was me in college. Uh. It took me a lot longer to figure it out. 
But I can remember being uh in like at lunch and you know, I I had hips, but I wasn't very developed on top, so I didn't mm-hmm. require much as yeah. far as like you could wear a halter top and you'd be fine. Yes. I've never been able to wear a halter top. Yeah. And I um could wear like a paper thin little sports bra. Oh, yeah. Or like not even I think you can't even consider it a sports bra. <laughs> I'm like laughing at the industrial <laughs> size. Like I used to have to wear two. Oh yeah, see I never had that I never had that problem. Um but I can remember like oh, and this just I don't even know if I wanna say it. But anyway, just not having much coverage there and wearing yeah. a white t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Done and it. being called out. Yeah. That yeah. happened to me like when I was like nine. Mm. Yeah. I told it early. That's not fun. <laughs> no, it was not fun. <laughs> but you know, that's like that's fun. the kind of thing where it's just like, ooh. You know what the irony of that is? Hmm. When, I was a, when I was a child, and I don't know what this is, like it's probably something to work through with a therapist at some point, but I, w- I would dress up in these formal dresses that my mom would get for me for me from goodwill mm-hmm. and i would put balloons in the top so that i could look like dolly parton mm-hmm. and you so asked for it <laughs> i told i raked you manifested leaves. your boobies. i raked <laughs> leaves in my front yard when i was like <laughs> eight or nine thinking okay pumping my chest up i'm gonna rake these leaves you rake done these leaves. manifested those boobies and then when right i got them yourself. i'm telling you <laughs> it was so awkward and it was so it was so confu it was so confusing to look like an adult mm-hmm. from the neck down and a child yeah. from the neck up and have all these weird feelings about mm-hmm. the world and mm-hmm. the boys. Yeah. And the boys having all these weird reactions to me. Because they didn't I mean they had reactions to me too that were also embarrassing occasionally. Yeah. And so but I was like the least confident, had no <laughs> idea what was going on. Yeah. So awkward. Like just it's just crazy. It's just so funny looking back. And then, you know, it's funny because I've stayed connected to a lot of these guys because prior to middle school, I was friends with the boys mm-hmm. because I would play kickball and baseball with them mm-hmm. at recess. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to play babies. Right. That's never been my thing. Yeah. I wanted to play baseball and I, I could hit as well as most of those boys could up until middle school. Yeah. Like I was a little beast. Yeah. And then puberty. And so they got a lot better, but I stayed friends with them throughout because I would go to their baseball games in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, when I quit softball my senior year, I went to all the Mm -hmm. baseball games and cheered on those boys. Cause I, I mean, I would go to their like state tournaments for Mm -hmm. Dixie League baseball in the summer. Like I was. Were they aware that you were there? Were they appreciative of that? Yes. See, I was the one showing up at the games, specifically baseball. Yeah. And they were like. It was why just is not, she here? Why are you here? But yeah. I but mean, I would sit with their moms. Like, yeah, always. I was always friends with adults, even mm-hmm. as a kid. Teachers, their moms, and I mean that probably was the not cool thing to do because then, of course, I was really not cool or cute because I was sitting with their moms. Yeah, but but I did. And one time, I think it was middle school. I was at the baseball field. My my little brother had a baseball game, and so I would or practice. One of the two. And I was up there for that reason. But I knew that my friends had practice that night and the fields backed up to each other. Mm-hmm. So I attempted to dress cute mm-hmm. and I was watching them practice. I was standing behind the field and I was like, the two of them I was really good friends with, both attractive, both popular, weren't my boyfriends, but I was close to both of them. We, we'd hung out and we talked a lot. Yeah. I hung out at school, not after school. So I'm standing behind the dugout. Watching them. Both of those guys, specifically their dads, were their coaches. Mm -hmm. One of the dads comes over and he's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm just watching the boys practice. He threw a cup of water on me. What? Yeah. The dad? The dad. Back up. Why? Because apparently I was a distraction. (gasps) I don't know. It was, I, I didn't even know how to react. Like I was like, what the hell? I've since learned he was really hard on his son and like it it makes a lot more sense now as an adult knowing what i know now but then that moment i was like did that just happen what the heck and i know I you're am like a so gape. enraged right now for you well like i am now too thinking back about it but it's like when you're a child that's a parent yeah so you don't like bow up right, right. but yeah. like as a grown woman oh if i saw a man 
do that to a young lady. Mm-hmm. He would get a piece of my mind whether he wanted it or not. Absolutely. I would I don't think I'd be able to hold myself back. Like I yeah, I no. just Mm-mm. And don't. God forbid anybody ever try that on one of my kids. <laughs> even even another like little boy. Yeah. Like to just Yeah, no. And I think he thought he was being cute. Uh-huh. Like I really do. I think he was like, "Oh, cool it off, kid." Like, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like yeah. you're, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-mm. It, I, I mean, it was just mortifying. Oh my gosh. You know, I remember telling I nearly said his name the next day at school. Like your dad threw water on me at practice. He was like, yeah, saw that. Sorry. Like it was kind of weird. And he was like, yeah, I think he just wanted you to like go away. (laughs) I was like, thanks. I just want, I mean, like I had, did I like them? Did I think they were cute? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did I also have a genuine interest in baseball? Yes. Yeah. Like I, I really liked watching them practice. I liked playing softball. Mm-hmm. I was curious to see like just how the game is played and watching the fundamentals and things like what do they do what I do? Like I don't know that I was analyzing it that specifically back then, but yeah. I know that I had interest in those things. So I'm sure that that was part of where my head was at and yeah. not just. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. Scary mm-hmm. moments as a teenager and a, and a middle schooler. There's I plenty mean, of them. There's so many. And I and I was just very aware too, in some ways, of how awkward I was. I remember yeah, in I seventh too. grade or eighth grade realizing. I remember saying to myself one night, "I'm in my awkward stage." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like somebody else had to tell me, but yes. I mean, you know, there were there like were like in a kind way. Yes. Where were like you're just it's just part of this age. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I feel like I had teachers that told me that. Well, that was kind of them. I mean, there yeah, <laughs> there were times ones. where I was very um, – it was v- just horribly, like, not obvious to me. And mm-hmm. it should it would have helped if had I understood. Yeah. As I got a little older, in eighth grade specifically, I can remember going, this is an aw- this is my awkward phase. Like, yeah. I just was aware of it. And so I, knowing that, I was able to just kind of, like – Give yourself some grace. And chill out a little bit and That's realize, good. like, all right, you know, but um, – Oh, yeah. There's so many, so many stories, but there's a few of our scariest. A few of our scariest. We'll have to, <laughs> we'll have another nostalgia bit some other time. Yeah. But. Happy Halloween, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the Celebrating Women Podcast wants to hear from you. Email us a voice message to celebratingwomenpodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear your story or the story of an incredible woman you know. Become part of the conversation on social media. Facebook.com slash Celebrating Women Podcast. On Instagram, search Celebrating Women Podcast. The Celebrating Women Podcast has been presented by Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler, Texas. Book your appointment today. Stop by the spa in Cumberland Shopping Center or online at handandstonetyler.com. The Celebrating Women Podcast is created and hosted by Mandy Montana and Ashley Fisher. Support the show for as little as $3 per month at celebratingwomenpodcast.buzzsprout.com or visit our show notes. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to subscribe to the Celebrating Women Podcast.